guys. Uh, meet us here at our, our tank here, Kingfisher. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a few different species. We're going to start off with our yellow belly rock cod. Um, yellow bellies are quite a big bulky fish. They kind of the fat lazy guy of the, of the reef. They like to sit, sit calmly and, and, and they're more of an ambush hunter. Um, scientific name Epinephalus marginatus. Uh, general color purpose they are like a browny sort of color with blotches on them and obviously from the name you get it they have a very very yellow belly which doesn't mean they're scared or cowardice it's just how they come about um, very short squat fish they've got very big mouths for their size and they've got as they get bigger and bigger they develop this little pot belly to them that's why they look kind of like a little piggy uh, as we said ambush hunter they they like sitting caves ledges that kind of area and they sit and wait for prey to come past one of their, their favorite uh, food items is a crayfish and you often when you catch them especially offshore you see the crayfish tentacles sticking out their mouth even on a small rock I'd say about that size you can get you can eat a crayfish that size and um, they've developed very very strong stomach acids that once they swallow the, rock, the, the crayfish hole they dissolve the entire skeleton so it doesn't actually come out as a little calcium deposit um, in terms of how much uh, they make up capture rates uh, Ori has done some research and shown that about it's less than a one percent of the catch by weight for both recreational and commercial that uh, the yellow bellies make up. So they're actually a very small amount of weight that they, or amount of weight that they make up per uh, catch per year. Um, as I said, yeah, they are caught by the commercial guys, by the rock and surf guys, and by the ski boat guys uh, recreationally. They really favour a nice big mushy bait. So offshore they eat anything. They they are quite gluttonous. They'll eat. Like we mentioned, crayfish, they love chocker, they'll eat a live bait. Uh, from the shore, they really, really like a head bait with, with cutlets on. So when, when we target to them, you often see we'll use a double orc trays because we want to target multiple species when it comes to scratching. So we'll put a little prawn bait at the top, obviously for any of the, the smaller bream species. And then the bottom bait is almost always a rock cod bait. And there we do, my favorite is a red eye head with cutlets on. That's a nice, strong smelling bait. It's soft so you can get his mouth around it. And onto that I normally put like a 4-0, 6-0 circle look, something like that. Uh, the maximum recorded size in South Africa is 27.5 kilos, sorry I had to look at that, um, and that was a 16 year old fish, so a fairly slow growing species, they're not very good at absorbing angling pressure, and also they are very very resident, so on, uh, for example, one of the tagging projects that they do up north, they've got a single yellow belly rock cod that every year they compete to catch him because he's within the same 20 meter spot. And uh, yeah, the, these fish, they become a bit territorial they, and they're very resident to a single spot on the reef. Um, which obviously makes them very vulnerable to exploitation. They stick to one area which makes them very easy to target. So once you know where he is, you can catch the same fish almost two casts in a row. It has been done before. Um, so yeah, they, they don't absorb angling pressure well because they're in a single spot, they don't move around. So they're getting the same pressure every time. So once you've taken him out of the system, he's no longer there. Versus a migratory species like say a kuta or a tuna, they can absorb that pressure because they're moving around and, and moving out of the system away from the angling pressure and back into it. Yeah, in terms of angling, uh, they're not the strongest fighters. They, once you get him out of his hole, out of his home, he's not a very, he's not gonna uh, floorboard you. So, I use my standard uh, scratching setup, which is the 3 to 5 saltist with a uh, 5,000 size BG and then 30 pound Dawa J braid on there. And that is more than enough for any of your scratching things. It's a little bit heavy for your lighter fish and a little bit soft for your, your very big fish. But in general purpose, that uh, can target anything with it. And guys, like we mentioned, although they're not the strongest fighters, they, he knows that reef like the back of his hand. He knows every little nook and cranny. So what you want to do is get him out as quickly as possible away from the reef. And once he's in the open water, he's very easy to bring in. But when he's in the reef, he's going to do everything in his power to get back into a little, little nook and cranny. And their gill plates are extremely hard. So what he does is he'll wedge himself into a, little, into a rock and he'll flare his gills out. And you actually cannot move him. He gets stuck like that. 
and you'll straighten the hook if you try and pull him out. So if that does happen, just slacken up on him. Once he feels that there's no more pressure, nothing pulling on him, then you'll move off. And then as soon as he gets going in, you've got to pull hard to get him out, out of the reef. But yeah, this is a species that's very easy to target. Um, they are very good eating, but as we mentioned, they're resident, they're not that common. Um, so if you do catch one, think about letting them go. Uh, ideally, do let them go, and then uh, you can come back the next day and catch them again, uh, have more fun. But yeah, get out there, get your scratching sticks, and uh, go catch some rock cod. Cheers.